Hello everyone. In this video, today we are going to study about correlation. Okay, so we are going to study about correlation. What are the types and uh, what is the method is used to describe correlation? Okay, so uh, two things we are going to study in this year. Uh, first of all, we are going to have an introduction here. Then in the next coming video, we are going to have the Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation and Spearman's rank correlation and a method of least squares. These are all the three things we are going to study in this correlation chapter. So first of all, we should understand what is called the correlation here, then how to uh, calculate this thing. So we'll quickly move on to what is called correlation here. Okay, so it is nothing but a measure of the linear relationship. We should understand what is called a linear relationship here. I'm going to tell you between two or more quantitative variable or categorical variable. So whenever we have a linear uh, relationship uh, between two or more quantitative and categorical variable. So now how two things are related. See, for example, we are having a variable called X. We are having the variable called Y. We are going to measure it. See, for example, I am going to have salary and I'm going to have the, um, see, expense here, okay? So salary is 25,000, for example. Now expense is 10,000 and my savings is 15,000. Like this, I'm going to have some uh, data here, okay? So now in this data, is there the salary and uh, how the salary and expenses are related together? That's what we are going to have in this correlation. Okay, now I'm going to give another example, food intake and your weight. Okay, now whenever I take more food, more weight. Otherwise, less food, less weight. So if it is like this, I'll call it as direct one. Whenever it is more food and less weight. If it is opposite, it is called indirect. We are going to study this also. Okay, now amount of time and the test score. More time I'm going to study, then I'll get more marks. Like that, if I have, that is called the correlation. Okay. Now, what are the types of correlation we are going to see here? One is called the positive correlation here. Another one is called negative correlation. Another one is linear, and another one is non-linear. Okay, now linear, and I, I'll just write some pictures like that you can see now. So now <clears throat> this is linear and non-linear. Now simple, multiple, and partial correlation. So here we are going to see all these things. What are they? Now, positive correlation means the variables move in the same direction. That means, see, suppose x variable increases, then x variable increases, then y variable increases. Okay. Now, x variable decreases, then y variable also decreases. Okay. So now these two are same, I'll say. So increase, increase. Similarly, decrease, decrease. Then I'll call it as the positive correlation. What is the negative correlation here is, see, if suppose something is increasing, okay? So now X is increasing, Y is decreasing. So it is in the opposite direction, okay? So it is decreasing. So now this is decreasing. Y is increasing. So when we have like this, this we will call it as the negative correlation. So the variables are there in the opposite direction. Now what happens to linear uh, correlation? Now ratio of change is a constant. See, for example, I'm having two variable X and Y. See, suppose this is 200, this is 400. Now I'm going to divide it by 200 by 400. I'm going to get one by two. Similarly, if I get all the values, another two, another two values, so if I have, a, have this ratio as a constant one, I'll be marking it on a graph. I'll get a straight line here. Okay, now when we get like this, we'll call it as linear. Linear is nothing but ratio of change is constant. Okay, so now non-linear means ratio of change is not constant. Okay, now ratio of the change. See, for example, 200, then I'm having 300 and 600. Now from here, the change, here the change. These changes should be uh, same. If it is same, it is, then we call it as linear. When that is not same, then we'll call it as non-linear. Now non-linear also sometimes called it as curvilinear because if the ratio is not equal, we'll be 
uh, getting a curve like this. Okay, sometimes you'll get a curve like this. So therefore, we call it as curvilinear. Okay. Now, what is simple partial and multiple correlation? Now, simple correlation, we are going to study only two variables are studied here. More than two variables when it is studied, then we'll call it as partial and multiple. So what is the difference between the multiple and partial? In this three, see only uh, two variables are having the influence, okay? So now when we have, when we are uh, going to study about three variables and we are uh, going to study about only the variable which is influencing the other variable that the two variable, then we'll call it as partial. We'll be having semi-partial also, right? So for time being, you can remember simple is for one, two variable, partial and multiple, we are going to study about three or more variables. Okay, now what are all the methods by which we can study the um, correlation here? Okay, one is the diagrammatic method. Okay, so first one is diagrammatic method and another one, other all the other threes are calculation method. Okay, so now we'll be having a diagrammatic method. So we'll, we'll plot the uh, points here by seeing how the points are lying. Okay, so in x-axis and y-axis, we are going to study the correlation method that's called the scatter diagram. Otherwise, we'll call it as scatter plot also. This diagram also replaced by scatter plot. So it is nothing but a graph which will tell you what's called the correlation. Then we are going to study about Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. So this will give you a measure. This will give you a value that ranges from plus one and minus one. Okay? From minus one to plus one, it is going to give you one value. From that value, I'm going to study the correlation. Then it is called Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. Okay, now Spearman's rank correlation will uh, come for the qualitative variable and method of least square also we are going to study. Okay, so now the first is the diagrammatic method. See, what is it actually? Correlation, we are going to study about the scatter diagram. Okay, okay? now correlation, scatter diagram. Okay, now what is the scatter diagram? Okay, now this should be variable two here. Okay, so now variable two. So I can call it as variable X and variable Y. Okay, see, imagine that uh, some values are given for me. X and Y is given 5, 7, 3, 2, uh, 10, 12, 4, 8. Like this, if it is given, I am going to just uh, note it down here, the value. I am going to note it down the value here. Okay, so I am going to note it down the value. So here, uh, my first value is 5, for example. Okay. Now five and the uh, y value is seven somewhere here. The seven is here. I'm going to mark it like this. Similarly, I'm going to mark it for three and mark it for two. For example, I'm going to multiply here. That is what is called the scatter diagram. Okay, now something is in the x-axis. Something will be in the y-axis. That is what I'll call it as the scatter diagram. Okay, so from this, we will be studying what type of variable it is given, why we are using it, those things we are going to study now. Okay. Okay, now, see, we are going to study what is called the positive correlation here. So, now, what is a positive correlation? See, whenever we have uh, the variable X and variable Y, we are having the ratio of increase. If the ratio of increase is same, then we'll be having a straight line marked here. Okay. Now, variable X is increasing. Okay, variable y is also increasing. Okay, and it is decreasing as well as the decreasing. Then it is called the this this I'll call it as same. Okay, increase increase so same decrease decrease. This is x. This is y. For example. So what we are going to have is the if the direction is same. Otherwise, if it is increasing increasing. Otherwise, decreasing, decreasing, if it's in the same direction, I'm going to have a positive correlation. See, whenever I mark it, so I will get a straight line. Usually, I'll get a straight line like this. So from top to bottom, we are going to have the straight line when we uh, join this point. You know, one or two points may uh, be uh, staying outside. So we'll be uh, just omitting it. So just we are going to see this alone here. So we'll be having a positive correlation. Okay, so now if it is in the opposite direction, okay, so one is increasing, see Y is increasing, X is decreasing. You can see from this diagram. So whenever there is a thing called the opposite direction, then we'll call it as the negative correlation. Okay, so we'll be having it. 
So suppose what happens if I have something like this now, I will call it as no correlation. Okay, no increase, no decrease. So it's just like a flat straight line, then I'll call it as no correlation. Okay, so this is called the scatter diagram for you. Okay, so now what is this non, see whatever, whenever we have the uh, straight line here, just like a straight line, I'm getting it here, like this or also like this, I'll be calling it as the linear correlation. So when we have the ratio is not equal, so we'll be having a curve like this. When I when I mark like this, I'll be having a curve. This is called non-linear correlation. This is also called as curvy linear. Okay, curvy linear, curvy linear correlation. This is uh, this is about uh, your uh, scatter diagram. Now we are going to study what is called the Carl Pearson's coefficient here. Okay, now this is only introduction. We'll be doing a separate video for calculation of Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. Okay, now what is this? See, it measures the nature and strength. Okay, two things you have to note here. One is nature, another one is strength. Okay, nature is denoted by the sign. Okay, so if it is plus sign, minus sign, strength will be denoted by the number. Okay, now this number will be always from minus one to plus one. The sign will be plus or minus. Okay, now it is denoted by the letter R, small r, whenever I say it is small r, it is called Pearson's coefficient of correlation. So now the value lies between plus one and minus one. Okay, now the sine of R, okay, now we have to note it here, sine of R denotes the nature. Okay, so now whether it's a positive correlation or the negative correlation will depend upon the sign. Whenever there is a negative sign, it is the negative correlation or plus means positive correlation, plus means direct, minus means indirect association. Okay, so now plus means direct and minus means indirect association. Okay, now the value of R denotes the strength of the association. So usually we'll be measuring from minus one, 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 and zero, then I'll be having it as uh, Two five zero point seven five and then uh, plus one. Okay, just like uh, so. I'll be showing it in the next uh, thing. You can see this. Okay, now these are all the values. Okay, now how see whenever there is minus and plus, it will show the nature. Now how to find out the strength of the association? Okay, so now my value lies between minus zero point two five to one. It is all. It is called the weak correlation. Okay, now it's. It's, it's between 0 to 0 0.25 positive, then it's also called as weak correlation. So I will call it as this is in the positive side, this is in the negative side. So when we, when we get 0 to minus 0 0.25 value, then within this range, then I'll call it as indirect weak correlation. When it comes here, I'll call it as the direct weak correlation. Both are weak correlation only. Now, most of the time we'll show some intermediate also. If it is from minus 0 0.75 to 0 0.25, then I will call it as intermediate. Most of the books will not uh, include this intermediate, but it is customary to remember this intermediate. Okay, so now these two blue, blue color range is called the intermediate. Now, what is the strong correlation? So it lies between minus one to 0 0.75 in this range, it is the indirect strong. Here, it will go for direct strong correlation. So whenever we write the inference, we are going to write this particle. So now we are going to study what is this. Now, indirect correlation will be from zero to minus one. Okay, so now minus one to zero, this ranges, whatever the value comes between minus one and zero, I'll always call it as indirect correlation. So when your value comes from zero to plus one will be uh, writing it as direct correlation. So now this yellow, this yellow here, okay, now this yellow, yellow region, what I'm going to write it, when the value comes from 0 0.75 to plus one, okay, see 0 0.8, for example, I'm having 0 0.8, what should I write? I should write, it is having a direct strong correlation, otherwise strong direct correlation. Okay, when I have uh, here minus eight, 0 0.8, then I'll write it as the indirect strong correlation. 
Similarly, we will write for all the other values also. So the values always lies between minus one to plus. Okay. Now, what happens if I get zero alone directly? Okay. Now, when I have the value called zero, then we write it as no correlation. When I have the perfect value minus one, then I'll call it as perfect indirect correlation. Then when I have plus one, I'll call it as perfect direct correlation. Okay, this is what is the call Pearson's uh, uh, coefficient of correlation. When we will be doing some sums, we'll be getting some value like this, 0 0.8. Then we have to write the inference like this. It has got no correlation. It has got perfect direct correlation. In between, I'll write, it is having intermediate direct correlation. In this, if I get, I'll write intermediate indirect correlation, etc. Okay, so I hope uh, you like this explanation, whatever is given here. So we'll be doing the sums uh, in the next video. Thank you very much uh, for watching this. Have a nice day.